Hello everybody, I am not doing my hair today. I am having the craziest but best day. I'm sorry if you can hear my dishwasher going in the background. I have been speed cleaning like a crazy person. But today is actually my son's birthday. Yay! It's his first birthday. So we've been having a great day, but I have finally finished a project I've been looking forward to so much. So we are gonna be doing trope tarts, choose my reads for a week maybe. So in here are a bunch of wooden hearts that have different book tropes written on them, romance tropes and like other just like generic romance things like small town romance, mafia romance, things like that. Some of them have two on them, like one on the front, one on the back, but the majority, only like a few of them. There's 12 in here and then a couple that are front and back. So a little, probably around like 15, 16 different categories. I am so excited. I think I filmed a little bit of me making them, so I'm gonna cut over to that really quick and then we'll be right back. In a world of green, just like a dream, you and I are standing wild and free, with petals so golden, the sun's warm kiss, a love so strong. thing you saw was like me painting them but so they just have this white writing and I just used a white paint pen from Hobby Lobby on them like see this one has two uh, these wooden hearts were from Target and I had most of the paint I used a couple of the paints that came with it like I loved the pink that came with it and then the box itself was a cornflakes box that we had and then i just cut out this heart with an exacto knife and then this is just saran wrap that i used my like scrapbooking sticky tape on on the inside and then stuck the saran wrap to it and i just hand painted the rest of it i need to do the sides and stuff still but i it is february 7th and i really wanted to go ahead and get this video started so alas here we are so i'm not totally sure because it's kind of hard to I, don't, I can't like shake it up I don't think so I'm gonna have to like reach in and kind of like look around for it I don't know I'm worried because some of the categories so I asked people on Instagram I was like what am I missing I had a long list but I felt like I was missing some and some of them I don't think I have books for so I'm going to have to like search TikTok or like ask on Instagram like for a rec for that kind but I'm really excited I thought this would be a really fun way to do like romance reads for Valentine's Day but without just being like I'm reading romance books because I, I could do that but I feel like I'd kind of burn myself out on it and this feels like it might be a more fun way and plus it was so fun to make this I'm like really excited I'm gonna like kind of use this as decor on my table all right let's pick our first trope tart I don't really know the best way do we think I should pour them out on the floor and blindly choose I could just kind of, okay, wait, I can kind of feel around. 
All right, we'll go with this one. And in case it's double-sided, I'm going to show you the side that we're gonna pick. Oh, okay, brother's best friend. Wow, and it was one of the double-sided ones. The other side was sports romance. So I can put this back in there, that way we can um, choose it. Brother's best friend, oh gosh, okay. Let me look and see what I have for that. I am not 100% sure, so I'm going to search on TikTok brother's best friend Rex and see if anything that pops up are books that I have. <laughs> Based off of my TikTok recon, two that I have are Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey and 99% Mine by Sally Thorne. <sighs> I'm gonna give them like a one page, oh, let me read the summaries. I am indecisive. I am not sure. This is hard since they're the same trope and like neither of them are on my TBR card. They were on my shelf. But I think, I mean, are they both like of similar length? 338, 356. Okay, we're gonna go with Fix Her Up. I have, it's been a while since I've read a Tessa Bailey. So we'll start off with Fix Her Up. I'm like 90% sure you can hear like the dishwasher and the washing machine and everything going. Um, but it is the next day. I did read some of Fix Her Up before bed last night. I am currently dressed for bed tonight. I, birthday party for Graham is this weekend. So exciting. Also, I'm not gonna plug my Amazon wish list. I have more than enough books. But if you wanna get Graham a book, he has a little birthday wish list down there of his birthday book list, feel free. That would make my day and probably make his way more. But anyways, been working on birthday party prep all day today. Ran so many errands, went to the library, printed some things out. I'll be sure to show you. I'll put like a little clip of his birthday party decor that I made somewhere in the video here. But I read to page 123 last night and I find it odd that the main love interest, the main girl, is a party clown like i don't understand that and the guy i actually really like the male main character right now but i'm very i'm just so intrigued by her like i don't feel like her clownness is important or adding anything but she her whole thing is like she wants to like expand her party business kind of thing so right now i feel like this is probably like a three star just like meh yeah not mad i read it not great could maybe i feel like get up to like a four if some stuff really picked up and was better maybe a 3.5 but that's my guess right now i think i'm gonna read a little bit before bed tonight but i am so tired but i'm hoping i could finish this one maybe tomorrow but regardless, tomorrow we're leaving for the birthday party because we're having the birthday party not in our home because we don't have enough home to fit all of our family members. We have a lot of family members <laughs> and there's not a lot of great hotel options. So we're kind of like meeting everybody in the middle and it's fun. We're doing this party at like a lake house kind of thing and it'll be great because a lot of our friends are gonna get to go. So I think I might, before I finish this one, I might pick a tart tomorrow, a trope tart um to take have a book to take with me for party weekend and i don't know maybe i'll do this vlog a little longer than i was thinking it's not like inherently has to be posted before valentine's day that was just what i wanted also these are my glasses aren't they so fun i got new glasses not this year i guess but like you know what i mean recently but i really like them i've had the same pair of glasses since like high school so it's an upgrade i love them the sides the little cat eye parts are like my favorite I never wear my glasses on camera because they're so reflective. But anyways, I'm gonna continue reading this. I do feel bad for the main character because like everyone treats her like a kid, but also she's acting like a kid. So, you know, but off to do more reading. I'll probably read some tonight and then I'll probably just update you guys again tomorrow. I am like 90% sure this is what I was wearing and where I was sitting last time I talked to you guys, but it is now Monday, February 11th, I think, maybe the 12th. No, 12th, because Valentine's Day is on Wednesday. I did not get to read it all on birthday party weekend. We were just hanging out with family, having a good time, and you know what? I'm fine with that. But I really need to edit 
my TBR game for February, but it is raining outside and I'm like almost done with this book. And so then I could pick another book. But today, Graham and I are having what we call PJ day. I am a stay at home mom, first and foremost. So we are hanging out in our pajamas all day and just having a good time. I'm trying to not put the reset pressure on myself to organize and clean and everything after being gone a weekend. I just want to like take a second to like decompress. So I did read a little bit this morning before I got my camera set up and you know put a bra on but I'm on page 274 and there are 380 so I definitely think I can finish this while he's napping. He just went down so I think I can finish this and then we'll pick the next one but i am staying in my pajamas all day and i got these for christmas and i love them they are so soft i've tried like all i've tried almost all the brands of pajamas <laughs> that i can think of if there's another brand of pajamas you think i should try i haven't tried skims pajamas they're on my list my sister-in-law got them for christmas and they are also very soft they feel like this and i really like this material because i'm like i don't like wearing long sleeves to sleep because i get really warm but a these like do this <laughs> So half the time they're not even long sleeves, but the material's really light. But I've tried lake pajamas and I really love my lake pajamas, except um, someone accidentally threw them in the dryer so they shrink. Um, I don't love my roller rabbit pajamas. I think the material's just too thick for me. And I love the print fresh pajama prints, but the material is not worth the price. Like I feel like the price you're paying is for the print, not for the coziness, because they just feel like paper i guess i don't even know the best way to describe it but anyways these are currently my favorite pajamas my lake pajamas are a close second but i'm i'm asking hopefully for mother's day to just get another pair of these because graham and i love our pj days but yeah it's raining we're reading i might put a reading thing on the tv if you're wondering why there's like a purple hue it's from the roku screen let's see if i can get like a raining yeah see the now elmo's on Let's see if we can get like a fun raining. I also love the like Animal Crossing. There we go, cozy nook ambiance. Ooh, I love this one, fantasy study room. We're gonna go with this one, I've used it before. But with this, it's funny because I do not like really care for the main character, but I really love her love interest. I mean, they're both, I don't love the female main character in this, Georgie, but I do really like Travis. I'm just curious where it's going to go. It's fake dating on top of what trope did I even pull this for? I need to go back and look at my footage to figure that one out. Cause I honestly don't know. <laughs> Was it fake dating? I seriously don't know. They're fake dating right now. And like her whole family looks at her like she's still a kid. I mean, she is a birthday party clown, which is a little weird for, I don't know why it's just kind of weird for me, but Anyways, it's still definitely looking like a three star. I really like Travis though. But anyways, we're gonna do some reading. I'm gonna finish my coffee, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna read. Great, welcome. I finished it. 
But I really loved the main guy. I really loved Travis. I did not understand their dynamic with their sister-in-law at all. And I didn't love <laughs> the fact that she's a clown. It was kind of weird. I'm s I can't remember now, but there was something in this that I did not like where I was like, this might be two stars. But now I can't remember it and the ending makes me feel like this should be three and a half. I finished this if I didn't say it. I'm trying, I'm like racking my brain for the part I didn't like because that makes me think that this should be three stars because there was something that made me think it should be two stars. It was fine. What trope did we read this for though? For real, I don't know. Let me look and see if I can remember. Brother's best friend. That's what this one was, was brother's best friend. Okay, let's pick out another tart. So it is like really raining. Ignore my fun bed head. We're not gonna, we're, it's PJ day. I already said that. All right, tarts are ready. <gasps> Enemies to lovers. Okay. Oh, the back, in the back of this one had billionaire romance. Okay. Let me, let's look at what we've got. Let's gather our options up. Okay. I have made a list of ones that are both on my physical TBR and on my Kindle that I want to read that are, if I Google enemies to lovers, they all popped up in different videos or Instagram posts. So there's Raiders of the Lost Heart, which I currently have from the library. Mile High, The Simple Wild, My Dark Romeo, A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime, and Dead Romantics. Now, I have to return Writers of the Lost Heart to the library some point this week, but I have really been wanting to read The Dead Romantics ever since I read Seven Year Slip, so I feel like this is a good reason to read it. I also didn't realize it was Enemies to Lovers. And I just, I read the seven year slip in like five seconds. So I feel like if I read the dead romantics, I can kind of like recoup some of the time I lost from not reading this weekend. So I think we should try that one and we'll see if it's actually enemies to lovers. Cause that was like enemies to lovers or like rivals to lovers. Cause I feel like enemies to lovers is typically in fantasy and I could do a fantasy book, but I'm trying to stick to like reading some of the romances. Cause I have a lot of unread romances on my shelf. I also have a lot of fantasy, but it's different. The unfortunate thing is I'm really in a fantasy mood. So once I'm done filming this video, I will absolutely probably be reading a ton of fantasy. Have I read a single book on my TBR this month? No, but let's start the dead romantics. I still haven't finished my coffee and it's, 1140. Not great. This book is great. I'm loving it. I have just been flying through it all day. I'm on page 180 or 190. I can't read. Um, this is not enemies to lovers. That post was a lie. The like three TikToks I saw that had it tagged that, not true. So now I don't know, do I read another, do I try to find a different enemies to lovers to read after this or do I pick a different prompt? I think, I probably will just pick another prompt, but maybe after that one, I'll put enemy lovers, like I'll put it back as an option. I'm just so confused why this was tagged as enemy lovers because it wasn't. The people of TikTok, when I scrolled enemy lovers recommendation videos, the three I saw this one in lied. This is like a workplace romance kind of thing. I don't even know if you could really say it falls under any real tropes. I'm gonna keep reading. It's like 340 pages. 
so I've only got like 150 pages left. So I'm definitely gonna finish this one and probably start another one today, depending on what I wanna do with my evening. I'd love to read something on my Kindle if I'm gonna read at night because then I can read it in bed, but I'll continue on. Okay, I'm now on page 274. I should have said this earlier and I didn't, but I feel like the whole time it's been very obvious why she can talk to this guy that's a ghost. And obviously like he's the romantic interest. So you're like, how does this work if he's dead? Like, I feel like it's been pretty obvious the whole time and I'm really curious to see if it's right. But I feel like there's no way I'm wrong. I might be. But I feel, the whole time I've been like, I feel like this is just super obvious. If it wasn't for that, I've loved every second of it. But I do feel like that bit of it has been clear to me since the beginning. So I only have, what is that? 345 pages and I'm on 270. I'll finish it up. I am loving it. It's not enemies, enemies to lovers though. So false advertising from the TikTok I saw that it said that in. I just finished this. It's 7.10, so Graham's about to go to bed and we're gonna read. So I need to pick out my next one. I give this four and a half stars. The only reason I'm giving it four and a half and not five is just because of the one thing that I felt like was a little predictable. But I love, love Ashley Poston's writing and I am so excited for her new book that comes out this year. I think it's like a novel, I don't think, a novel love story. That's what it's called. Anyways, this was great. Not the right trope that we had pulled, but hopefully we can do better with this next one. Let's grab our box. Here we are. I really want to grab like a green one or a blue one. Okay. Is that a dark romance? <laughs> what a choice. Okay. I only have, and this one still has something on the other side, so we can put it back in. Okay. For this, my thought process was I don't read dark romance, but I'm going to count something like, like a mafia like romance as dark romance. So I think I'm going to do the butcher and the black butcher and blackbird because I've been wanting to read it. And it's the only one that I physically own that could fit that. I could do like some other ones on my Kindle, but I got that one in the mail and I really want to read it. So we're gonna, we're gonna read that one. Hello, not sure the last time I updated you guys. I think it was when I picked this. I, it's now February 15th. Yesterday was Valentine's day and I did a little bit of reading in the morning, but not as much as I wanted to. I got to page 80 and I have heard that this is really spicy. Like I'm pretty sure Haley Pham flipped through like a 30 page spice scene. So we'll see how I feel when I get to that. But right now, like I love like the writing and the storyline, if that makes sense. But like if it's just annoyingly spicy to me, I'll just like flip past those pages. But right now I'm actually like really enjoying this. The serial killer-ing is a little graphic, but not so graphic that I want to die. But my hope is, so I think this is like 300 and like 20 pages. And my hope is that I could at minimum get to page 250 today, but I would love to finish it. Graham just went down for his nap. My goal yesterday was to get to page 160 and I got to page 80, so I got halfway there. So if I could at least get to 250 today, I'd feel good about it because I, I really wanted to start another one today, but I don't know if we're going to, but we're going to read this. It is laundry day, so I am in my little hobo outfit, but I've been trying to figure out the best way to do my hair. Lately, I've been trying to do a bunch of different things and I changed my shampoo and did more of like a fun blowout this morning. So I feel like my hair looks really fun, but I am not gonna put on makeup or um, probably put on a different outfit for a little while because I am doing all my laundry. So that is what we are up to, but I'm going to keep reading. Graham's gonna keep napping at least for a little bit. He went down at like 10.15, it's 10.40. Fingers crossed he makes it all the way to 12, would be great. I'm just moving a lot of stuff out of my armrest area. But back into it we go.
Lighting's not great right now, but I did finish Butcher and Blackbird. Bert. Butcher and Blackbird. I think I'm gonna give this four, maybe 4.5. I honestly really enjoyed it. I always have a hard time with like spice, but it is, I loved the plot of this and I really loved their romance, but it wasn't like an Emily Henry level book for me or Abby Jimenez. So it's probably like four, but maybe four and a half. I definitely really enjoyed this and I just skimmed the spice, but the spice didn't come for like, it was like two, I, until past the 200 page mark. And I really loved the main male character and he's a chef. Also, so many of the trigger warnings like weren't that bad. Like great that they're there, but like they didn't freak me out too bad. Okay. I don't know if this is gonna be our last one I pick. It might be because I really wanna read some fantasy books. So here we are. This tart is sideways. <laughs> we are gonna, we're gonna pick a tart. What's funny is I don't even know what like colors I've grabbed. And uh, that one's blank. Forced proximity. What do I have that's forced proximity? I don't think anything. <gasps> Raiders of the Lost Heart is Forced Proximity. Should we read that? I made like a, I watched a ton of trope, like TikToks and Instagram posts to like find things. But after our mishap with whatever it was, enemies to lovers, I'm gonna double check. So let's see if I can find Raiders of the Lost Heart trope. Got her, she's all reflective cause she's got the library on it. But I'm really excited because this, is about some archaeologists and like their rivals and she needs someone to like sponsor her dig or like do something with like she like wants to go find this artifact and whatnot and so she has to um she's forced to work with wow her rival so we'll start this one finished Raiders of the Lost Heart and I am torn on this one. Obviously I gave you literally no thoughts while I read it, but I like sat down and just flew through it. It obviously Indiana Jones vibes. They're archeologists. They are like rivals from college where she thought like something was gonna happen between them romantically. And then she caught him making out with this girl who was this daughter of this professor who Corey thought she was gonna get a fellowship for, but instead Ford got it and so she was like okay cool he made out with this guy's daughter and now he got the job that was supposed to be my job so they have this very intense animosity and basically he anonymously asks her to come onto this dig for looking for this person and knife that they had this Aztec warrior that has, it's like her like life's work like all of her thesis her dissertations like all those things that it's on it's focused on this and so she's like wow i don't know who this anonymous person is but like cool i'm gonna have to go i have to take this opportunity and she shows up and finds out that the anonymous person is ford and so she's like oh but definitely forced proximity this one was the right trope at one point there is there's only one tent and i honestly loved their chemistry. I do feel like she was a little overly sexualized, but like that was kind of like one of the things she struggled with. So I guess I understand that that was like a plot point was like people kept sexualizing her. And so that was like a big point of the plot was like she had this, she wasn't respected as much in the archeology span community because of it. I honestly really liked it. It does have a lot of those like, and my thighs clenched lines, which I 
find those so annoying and the ending felt a little bit rushed but honestly if you were looking for like a really like adventure rom-com i honestly really enjoyed it <laughs> it was basically indiana jones with a romance with indiana jones that that's probably how i would put it because it was very adventure fun to me it wasn't just your stereotypical rom-com and i was there were a lot of things where i was like "Ooh, this is what's happening i've caught i figured it out and i was wrong I appreciate that it had some good twists, but I think I'm gonna give it, I feel like it deserves a four, honestly, for how much I liked it. Was it the best ever? No, but it was really entertaining. I don't know, four, I think. Let's go back through everything because I feel like we just gotta, we gotta chat, I'm done. I wanna read some fantasy, so we're done now. But we read these four books, Fix Her Up, Dead Romantics, Butcher and Blackbird, and Raiders of the Lost Heart. Fix Her Up, was for brother's best friend and it also had fake dating and trope wise they were both very good the brother's best friend element could have been maybe a little bit stronger i feel like the brother was mad for like 0.2 seconds then he moved on but would have liked to see a little bit more tension trope wise for this but overall i give this i think three just a flat three stars I am interested in one of the other characters, so I do think I'll probably read their book. Like, it's like interconnected standalones. I do think I'll probably read that because I'm very curious what happens. Because they're like a married couple that are having problems. And I'm just very curious how their rom-com goes. But Fix Her Up was good on its trope, which we pulled for Brother's Best Friend. But it also had very strong fake dating. And I guess one of us is famous because he was famous. So, a lot of tropes in this one. Three stars. Next, for enemies to lovers, TikTok lied to me. The dead romantics, not enemies to lovers. Honestly, I don't think Ashley Poston really has like any tropes in her books. Like her plots, I think the reason, part of the reason, I think part of the reason her books are so good is because while they're predictable, they aren't the very stereotypical tropes. Now this one, I did predict something like kind of major and it didn't bother me, but there was no like real big reveal for me, I guess. And I, I guess this one is workplace romance, essentially. But this was very good. I love the seven year slip. I love the writing from Ashley Poston. This one is not as good to me as seven year slip, but her writing is just so beautiful. So I gave this one, I think I'm gonna honestly give this one a four. I think originally I said four and a half, but I think it's more of a four. And also it wasn't enemies to lovers. The like four TikToks I saw that said that clearly have not read that book. Like they don't like each other for two seconds. I don't think that's enemies to lovers. And like, I was even accepting like rivals to lovers cause I feel like enemies to lovers is a very heavily like fantasy thing. No, they were not even rivals. And then for dark romance, I read Butcher and Blackbird. This was honestly really good. <laughs> Like the more I think about this, I'm like, I really liked this book. So I think this one is honestly probably four and a half for me. I don't love smut. Like spice to me is not like a big thing I look for in a book, but I just like skimmed a couple of the scenes and like pushed through, but I loved their romance and like, he's a chef. I really liked this one. This one might be my favorite one I read. And it was definitely dark romance. I don't think it was like, that's the first like dark romance I've read. Like I haven't read any mafia or like anything like haunting Adeline. And I'm not really interested in that. That is probably the level of dark that I can handle. But I do love like the, I don't know if I really, there's anything I love that's dark. I was gonna say like I love Peaky Blinders, but I don't think that's that dark. They just like are gang and they kill people. So like, I think I could do like mafia romance. I don't know how dark I can get though. And then like we just talked about for first, for Forced Proximity, I read Raiders of the Lost Heart. I have this checked out for my library. Honestly, this was really fun. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. Did great Forced Proximity. The tension was high. So honestly, this was a very fun, like adventurous romance. And I would recommend it if you're looking for something different than like, I would recommend any of these for in general, but also like if you're looking for something different than your normal kind of rom-coms. All very different. This is more, I don't wanna say sappy, but this is more heavy and beautiful writing. This is just, you're like, I have to keep reading. These people are crazy and their romance is crazy. And then this was just like adventure and like if you like National Treasure, I feel like you'll love this book. And I love National Treasure. My husband thinks that it's like so silly, but I love that movie. I'm sorry this took me like 8,000 years to like film, edit, post, I'm sure. So super sorry, but this was fun. And you guys said you liked reading vlogs. So I hope this one was enjoyable. I hope you guys enjoyed 
my trope tarts box. She's suffering. I'm gonna have to redo her uh, her saran wrap and put her in storage and we'll pull her out next February. But I think this was so fun. I'm gonna finish the box up a little bit on the sides. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys here next time. Mm -hmm.